You might think I've already made this video before. But that was this video. In that video, I mostly used the triplets ACs in a straightforward way. That also meant I lost its most valuable feature, its flexibility, which we will try to implement today. We will skip the historical context as we already did that in the other video. Instead, we're gonna give you an example of how and why we should make a video concerning its flexibility. Heroes of the Greeks will be here today as my opponent, and we're gonna be using the DEI mod. And with that said, let's begin. The best example of Roman flexibility is at the Battle of Sama. Once the Carthaginian elephants charged Scipio, the command of the Roman forces, he gave the signal for his troops to form manable channels, luring the elephants into a trap. Once that was done, he would reform and face the Carthaginians in the usual way as we covered in the last video. But as Scipio realized he was yet to fight the enemy elite infantry, he reformed his lines yet again, this time into an inverted wedge with strong flanks and a weak center. With the aid of his Nomadian allies, he prevailed over Hannibal, the mastermind behind such victories as Trebia and Cannae. We should all pretty much know how the triplets ACs works, but I will be quick about this anyway. In principle, there are three main lines formed up in a checkerboard arrangement. The first is for light infantry or medium infantry, aka the Hastati. The second is for the heavy hitters, for example the Principes. But for others, factions like the Greeks could be Thorax or maybe even the Oath Sworn for the Gauls. Third, but certainly not least, is the Spear Infantry, and that is the Triari for Rome, and, as we're gonna see today, something like in the Thorax quality as well. They are an excellent reserve force that will grant you great cover at the back. Then you will also have your support units in the form of skirmishers and cavalry around the flanks and front line. Last time we pretty much only tried to send in one line at a time, which didn't go so well, as you might expect. But perhaps if we can use our flexibility to rearrange our formation mid-battle, we might be able to change the outcome. Basically, if we see our enemy is focusing on a certain flank, we will just pull up with our second line to stop them. If the enemy focuses in the center with pikemen, we can split up our two front lines to go out on the flanks to move around, while the spearmen keep the pikemen from moving. Or, if we are the attacker, we can form up into an oblique order or inverted wedge right before the engagement to conceal our intentions to catch him off guard. Basically, the triplets aces is so balanced we can switch tactics in a pinch depending on what we are facing. This also means we in general are running a risk of getting outperformed on a certain aspect of the battle, like in the cavalry or ranged department because we are so balanced to be okay at everything but not excellent at a certain thing. In terms of the army, we are gonna be using the RDI, as we tried the Romans last time, plus a few other factions. And they have a very similar advantage and playstyle, so it makes sense actually. What I'm referring to is in terms of their infantry. These Sika bearers and elite hoplites are perfect to act as the second and third line. The first line, however, isn't gonna be as strong as a typical Roman Astarte, but it is all we can do. We can't really say much more about our cavalry. They're cheap and won't do that well in a one-on-one -on -one battle, so we will require support from either the archers or spears to help in that front. I think that should mostly cover everything we have, so now let's go straight into this battle against heroes of the Greeks who will control the Odrysians in a great battle of Thrace. We marched forward in our flexible triplets ACs, using our javcap on the flanks to scout and harass the enemy lines. So we had as much time as required to analyze the weaknesses of our opponent. He clearly had way more cavalry than us, plus they were most likely better, as the RDI cavalry isn't that great. Therefore, we had to be smart about it. 
We lured his cavalry out into the open in an endless chase for our archers to pick them off while running. However, Heroes of the Greeks was well on his way to surround our position with cavalry and shock infantry on the flanks and pikes from the front. Knowing we will attempt to stay away from the frontal pikes, I used our flexibility to place our heavy infantry on the flanks. They will get help from the first line which easily could run around without too much trouble. The spears would act as a screening force to slow down the pikemen. In behind, the massive cavalry engagement had begun in two different groups. Our archers did their best to assist our general and other inferior mounted units. They were more important than ever as our commander was stuck in a two-on-one duel. Whereas the other cavalry fight was lost, our enemy used their extra units to hunt down our archers. It was anyone's guess really on whose general survived. It could go either way. He had the cavalry and we had the archers who were slowly getting killed. Our general wavered with some of his cavalry doing the same. However, with the charge of a single archer unit, we got the job done, routing and killed the enemy general giving us a massive edge. In the meantime, the infantry battle was going in our favor too. Massive gaps formed between the pikemen for us to run through, eventually. We had successfully outnumbered the enemy on our right while contesting center and left. This allowed us to get in behind his lines and overall just envelop him. But now the enemy general had died too, giving us the morale advantage as well. Not long after, the remaining auditions surrendered. In terms of the statistics, let's start off with the cavalry fight. We were clearly both outnumbered and lacked the quality to win in a fair fight. Hence the low kills from our side. But with our ranged support, they managed to get some quality kills that eventually turned the tides of battle. Their effort basically saved the fight. Yet that doesn't take anything away from our infantry, who in a superior fashion all apart from two light units, gained over 100 kills. Some are even close to 300. But what really impressed me the most was our spears, who went toe to toe with heroes of the Greeks' pikes. They barely suffered any casualties, but still killed so many. A very pleasing result, despite it being a Pyrrhic victory. As always against the AI, we could easily outflank the formation and secure the victory. I don't really want to say how to defeat this tactic again, as we pretty much already did that in the last video, and because it is so easy. So instead, we might as well just go straight to the point. One should take the flexibility of the triplets ACs into account, it improves by a ton. But that doesn't say a whole lot, as it was astonishingly bad before. At least now it has the possibility to win against the player. Yet there are so many better ways to win than this. Both against the player and the AI. Overall, I would only recommend using this tactic if you want to feel immersed or have a fun and unique challenge. But if you are outnumbered and in need of a victory or in an actual tournament, I wouldn't recommend the triplets aces at all. Instead, perhaps go for the oblique order or the wedge. But that is all from me today.
So until the next time, everyone. See you next time.